Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Whip Finish Wednesday, where my beautiful bride, Katie, and I go live with you just about every Wednesday night. We type Hi. some fun flies. Welcome back. That's right. <laughs> And uh, it is so awesome to see Nan, Bill, Josh, Patrick, Freddie, and everyone before Chris uh, was on. It's awesome to see everyone uh, chiming in. Patrick says it's 12 in Pennsylvania. It was either negative one or one here this morning. Hope everyone is thawing out. What's up, Ben, David, Ed, Jeff, and uh, everyone else? Hello. It has been probably the longest in seven years that we have gone without seeing you all. It's been roughly a month, and uh, and I gotta tell you, I think Katie missed seeing you all. Oh gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> but she, she's the grumpy one. She is a grumpy one. Mm -hmm. But um, we are. What's up, Al and Fudd and Joe? We're going to miss seeing a bunch of you guys over in Denver this weekend. I know you all are uh, have got a lot planned, uh, but tie a fly and send us some pictures from Denver. Um, but we do have a fun night plan. What's up, Shane, over on Instagram? Denver, yep. Um, we got a fun night plan for you all tonight. We're going to tie up the Thunderhead and also the probably the Chocolate Thunderhead. This is a book. This is um, a fly that is popular in the Great Smoky Mountains. Um, we have been tying it out of this book here. This is Roger Lowe's Fly Pattern Guide of the Great Smoky Mountains. And it, I can never find it. And I, I've been, the cover fell off this thing. And I finally realized it is in alphabetical order. So tying the Thunderhead and the Chocolate Thunderhead here. These patterns were developed or uh, designed by Fred Hall of Bryson City, North Carolina. I believe the story is Fred fought in World War II, and when he came back from the war, he didn't have, uh, he had lost his job, and he and his wife started tying flies and selling flies after World War II, and um, that's when this fly and a bunch of other flies were created. So, not a new fly, not a fly I'm claiming, but it is a fly that I'm claiming to, that works really well. And who's the author of that book? Roger Lowe, Lowe. is the author, L-O-W-E. Right, and he is, he used to own a fly shop in Waynesville mm -hmm. years ago, and now he guides for <laughs> a fly shop that's out of Highlands and Cashers. I can't remember the name of it, but he's a, he's a guide now. That's right. What's up, Jesse? Oh, on the TV. Cool. So Tyler has, knows the book. So um, Tyler's got it. But this is a very basic book, but it is a phenomenal book when it comes to just getting some good Smoky Mountain patterns. And I don't know if Jesse has this one. Uh, Jesse, do you have Roger Lowe's Fly Pattern Guide to the Great Smoky Mountains? It's one we've had for a couple of years. Yeah, well, five. A while. I don't remember. Where'd you say we got it? Uh, we got it from Tuck and Fly Shop. Okay. I think Shannon Messer custom ordered it for us because they were out. And he told us it was. Yeah. Al says okay, that so, one in cash. So Jesse has a uh, great Smoky Mountain Angler has that book now. And not sure how many more are left. Um, so if you um, if you like that book, get a hold of, great, of uh, Smoky Mountain Angler. Uh, and uh, Jesse says they've got a couple copies left. So that is great. That is also where the Adams variant that we will tie sometime soon uh, will be. Um, that'll, that's where that one came from. And the Adams variant is probably one of my favorite um, brook trout flies to tie. They're just a blast. Um, so anyway, um, Katie is typing away. Chris has got a signed copy. Not fair. Um, and his fly something cashiers cool. I think so, it's called Brookings. Brookings, like Brookings or Brooklings mm -hmm. or something like that. You were a Marine once upon a time, yes, sir. That is correct. And if I look cold, um, that's because it that someone said I look cold. 
I, I came home from work today and I took a shower, I washed my hair and I didn't feel like putting it back in a ponytail. So it's not, I'm not trying to say it's warm in here, but I'm not cold. I'm just lazy. Can you show everyone your Christmas present that you got? Wow. That you're wearing? Speaking of cold. Check it out. It's a bling, bling, limited edition, one of one. It's a product of Tennessee. It's an airbrushed wolf howling at the moon sweatshirt with John's name on it. If we ever do a logo, it will have a wolf howling at the moon. So, five so I can see this finish shoveling. It's yeah. awesome. Thanks, thanks, Dave. I love it. Oh, cool. Hear that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, wolf howling at the moon. I get distracted reading your all's comments because that is awesome. Um, yes, Marines do man the embassies. They babysit lives. Yep. Um, all right. So if you want to show the fly real quick, this is uh this is the standard no bells, whistles. This is the thunderhead. So it's it's a relatively simple fly. I mean, it doesn't have a whole lot of materials to it. You've got deer hair for the tail, bang right here. Um, you've got yarn for the body. So I'm going to use the Superfly Poly Yarn. I'll either use the Iron Blue, which is what you see here, which is gray. Or I'm going to use brown. Um, that for the chocolate variation. Well, thanks, Ken. I was trying to get his attention so I could show some of those okay. um, Mercer missing links. So hold on, Ken. You'll see your Mercer missing link here. Um, we definitely had just a few of them that... Came in over Christmas. This was David Smith's Mercer's Missing Links and Ken's versions of his Missing Links. And That's... Steve Yates also sent in. Oh, Steve sent one in. That's awesome. Show sure did. So, guys, thanks for sharing those with us. And I knew they were there in our email, and I wanted to make sure that I, I put them up here tonight so that I could share them. So, um, there you go. That might be the first time Steve Yates has sent flies to us, emailed them to us. That's, that's pretty darn cool. Well, it was so good that he felt like he just needed to share. So um, so for those of you who don't know, you can email us your fly. I want you to take a picture of it and, and any variation of this fly. And the following week, we'll share pictures of it. Uh, Katie's going to type up our email address. It's just themoothflyfishing at gmail.com. Or you can post it on Instagram, but make sure to tag us on Instagram in the photograph. So not just in the body, but in the photograph, tag Demuth underscore fly fishing. Um, and that way we can find it on Wednesdays. Because when you tag us in a comment or something, we see the comment and, it, and it's really cool. But um, after a couple of days, I forget that it's there. So um, tag us in the photograph and we'll see it or just email it to us. And then um, 74 degrees. Oh. Um, and then we'll share it the, the, the next week. And that is uh, really what gets us excited. So anyway, so let's uh, switch over some variations here. If you notice a little reel that we, we posted, and I haven't, I haven't even looked at this since we got back from the Virginia um fly fishing and wine festival that we just got back from but here's the one that we tied it's basically the same thing we tied this at the show i could probably dress it out but it has a little bit of partridge on the front of it which is kind of cool um and yellow wings and this is the chocolate version so i thought that'd be kind of cool a little something a little different um what's up glenn um Yes, this will be popular. So let's go ahead and get to get to tying. So I'm going to tie this fly size 14s and 16s. What I personally will, will fish, um, I would say tie them up to a size 12 if you wanted to. Um, and I probably bigger than that. You have the dove to do. I don't know. I do not know. Make a 20 and sell these. I know. I'd have to check. I'm probably Jesse. Um, is that a new hook? No, it is not. This is um, now what it might be. This is the mids. Jaw. These are the mids jaws for the Renzetti Master. So just a different set of jaws. I'll switch them out every now and then. These are 
uh, probably got these three, four years ago, Joel. And I've got to clean my glasses because it that, that'll greatly improve how well I can tie. The, how well I can see anyway improves. So, and for those of you on Instagram, let's zoom in a little bit maybe for you. We'll move this over and move this down. There we go. A little bit better. So I'm going to start off with Superfly 12 Watt Classic Wax Thread in black. So we're going to do real, real fancy. Um, okay, so we're going to start the thread. Was that about the th three quarter mark? And bring it back. Pop it off. I'm going to bring the thread right to there. Maybe to there. So that my thread is, is just about right behind where I started it because this is where I'm going to have my wing come up and this will give me a little room to wrap the front hackle and I'll tie, have the wing tied off here. Deer tail or deer, deer body tail. And then. Um, Hi, Bear. I'm so glad that you're watching tonight. I hope you're staying warm wherever you are. All right, let's switch over to the, uh, the material prep view, honey. Okay. So do you have the uh, Mr. The Fly Right, the quill, the color of dubbing that... Um... No, I can I, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not using dubbing on this one, but I probably do. But I, I don't have... I'm trying to do better and have just the stuff I'm going to use. That's okay, because right now, Jesse is probably whipping it up for you. He probably is like, oh, we'll see. Um, okay. So right here, um, okay, so here is our, our um, calf tail. And if you want to, you can substitute calf body here, or you could just substitute some sort of poly yarn or some sort of something else if you want synthetic wing. This is the uh, Nature Spirit calf tail um, uh, in um, fluorescent white. So what I'm going to do is, um, Katie, can you move this yep, camera? I'm just saying, I'm you uh, like I'm way out here so you can see it. Let me be back here. It's kind of making making a little more difficult. There we go, Katie. Now we're talking, getting a little bit. Let me get it so it's right here. Nice. Let me see that cap you have on. Oh, Glenn, let's see the cap you've got on. She's adjusting my camera, Glenn, but once she gets done, she has. She said she has two for a chocolate fly. Yes, she has to stay warm for a chocolate fly. Yes. Well, we're going to tie the chocolate one in a second. Okay. So this is the tip of the of the tail, as you can see. So when I cut this out, I want to pull this straight up and straight away from the, the, um, the tail. So you see how the tips are somewhat aligned there. I'm going to cut out. Doing this so you can see is a little more difficult than you think. So cut out like that. So not very aligned, which is okay. I pinch this and I'm going to get my comb. And I like to, I don't say roughly, but a little more than roughly, but I like this to comb out the short fur. <laughs> I wish that they could hear Misha snoring in the other room. Sorry, it's too funny. Yes, it's I'm, so loud. I'm glad I can't. Oh, show Glenn your hat that you're wearing. Katie. Oh, I would love to. This is from Loon right here. We just did a video for Loon today, so hopefully they will like it and you guys will see it sometime. This is, um, yeah, I got this from Loon and it's kind of, it looks like, I don't know, like kind of like a cool like Loon team hat maybe, like team wear hat. So I like it. I like the colors. Like if you're going to play softball, that'd be the hat you wear. Yeah. For the loon probably. team. Sure. Or or maybe maybe I'm trying to coin this term. Maybe if you're a lunatic, right? Yes. You keep trying to coin that. It's not not very. Yes, it's cool. very Packers colored. Speaking of Packers, I've got a stack. Or the Oakland eggs. Um, this is really where having the right size stacker come comes to play. We could use the Rosetti one. We could use this one. This pull it down. You see your tips. Pull it out. If you want to, you can stick it in here. It really doesn't matter. But to put it in reference, this is the size that normally you see me use. So I'm normally using this size. And for the, the calf tail, I'm using much bigger. So 
<clears throat> the calf tail like expands where it's crinkly. It expands and it needs extra room to be able to be properly stacked. What's up, Joe? Yeah, flat bill like the cool kids. I I don't even know. Like I, I get so confused. Is this flat bill still cool? Well, it always looked dumb on me. I tried my best. It's kind of like a beard. Yeah, your your um grape is way too big for a flat bill. That's right. Okay, so I've got my my wing here. So let's switch over to the the hook itself. Okay, so this is what I just did. You can see my tips. They're not perfectly aligned, but they're somewhat aligned. They're kind kind of aligned. Now, just because I've tied a few of these, I want the I want my wing to be a, a little bit shorter than the shank. Just a little bit. So, hey, Gary. What's up, Mr. Barnes? Static is high today. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about with me stacking? Um, so I want it just a touch shorter. So I just kind of measure where my fingernail is and say, eh, looks about right. I'm going to cord up my thread so it'll have as much grip as possible. And I'm going to try to measure it just right. It's right about there. That looks about good. Pull it tight. Now with over with touching wraps, I'm going to keep this good and tight. I'm going to build up a little band. I'll, that is roughly how much tackle I'm going to wrap behind it. So now I'm ready to cut this off, still holding on to my butt ends. Lift up, stick my scissors in there. See how it's like kind of angled? Cut it off. And normally I get all that in there. Didn't that time because I'm a newbie. So we'll do a little trimming here. Is Jesse still on here? Is he, is he chatting? I was curious how the new Smoky Mountain Angler in Knoxville is doing. I've been wanting to come over and see it, but we don't we rarely go to Knoxville, so maybe want to get the car serviced. And I'm spending too much time. So I've got my little um, ramp there. And I'm going to pull, just pinch the butt ends and with pretty tight but open spiral wraps. I'm going to bring my thread all the way to the back and that will show my nice little ramp. Okay. So just because I don't want to build a whole bunch of stuff here and have this possibly slide forward, I'm going to bring my thread back to the front. Pull tight. Bring all this up. I want to do one thing. Let's get this straight up and down and break my thread. See, it just, it's not one thing, something else. I think I've tied, no, I did break it once last night. I was gonna say I've tied them for quite a while. I think I broke it once at the show. Yeah, that's broke. But hey. Well, that's broke. He will come to Lancaster show. I'll just tie it off like so. Pull that off. Yeah, that's fine. No worries. All right, so I'm going to bring my thread all the way to the hook eye. Now I've got a nice little thread base back to the wing. Do a couple wrap, do a handful wraps here. Now, if you notice what I'm doing, I'm not trying to, when people say build a, Oh, I can't think of the name they're, they're talking about, like a, a ramp or something here. Like you're trying to build the thread up to behind some sort of material to prop this up. It's not necessarily supposed to be a whole bunch of thread wraps right here. Okay. Like it, you're not trying to just jam a bunch of thread drops and build like this big ramp right here. You want your thread to come, come up, bring it back and up and over. Like we're jamming these thread wraps right up against. We're trying to, just bring it all the way back. Like my my um, thread is going back towards the bend. It's almost touching the bend. I bring it back down and around, so I can build this up quite a bit more with a lot fewer thread wraps. If that makes sense. What's hiding for? Thread dam. There you go. Dam, dam, dam. Thread dam. It's a thread dam. That's what I'm trying to come up with. A thread dam does not need to be a giant dam of thread. It just needs to be thread 
shoved up against right where my long fingernail is shoved up against an end right there. And that will prop it up enough. And I'm just barely did it right now. And it's fine, but you don't need to build up the same type of ramp we've got on this side of the, the material, if that makes any sense. And if it doesn't ask a question, that's why that's what a fish says when it's, it's packed up. Um, all right, so let's switch over to the, the material prep view again because I've got my deer hair. Deer hair is right. Uh, Tom Rosenbauer came up to me this weekend. He said he saw the tail or something. He said, Where did you get this, this, uh, the deer for that tail? And I said, Well, I don't know. I know I got it at um, Blue Ribbon Flies. But I don't know what, what kind it is because it's got Bucky's handwriting on it. And that's what it says. So I, I couldn't tell you. And he just kind of laughed because he's like, yep, if it came from there and Bucky did it, he it's good stuff. All right. David, you're right. That's exactly what they say. All right. So we're going to stack that a little bit. Try to, although I don't think I, I don't clean that out. Make sure because it wasn't stacking. This is pretty clean stuff. Well, it wasn't stacking. That sweatshirt, I'm going to get a fat like that. Get a tat like that. Katie would be impressed. I just always loved the out, the um, wolf howling in the moon. I just feel like that's. I would. Well, I'm serious. We thought universal about doing, symbol of coolness. We thought about doing some sort of a a Demuth fly fishing logo with a wolf howling at the moon. Yeah, but I just couldn't take ownership of that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just that's for everybody. Oh, we well, we'll could definitely do it. All right, so we'll switch back over to the vice. All right, so we've got our our tail here, and it's actually um, relatively big. So if you think about relatively big, if you're talking to mayfly, you, you know, we're about three, four tails. Um, Steve, this is two, four, six, eight, ten. This is 24 uh, fibers to make this little tail. So we want it um, about the hook shank length, about. So we'll get our thread to the back, set it where we want it. Should be about right. And I'm going to do loose wraps here until I get to the right before my... Um, flat spot i check out everything make sure it looks the way i want now i can pull it tight and that flares pull this back pull this back back and back so now it's not going to spin on us or anything pull it off just like that all right so now we're going to bring this bring our thread back to the rear to get everything really tied in to where it's not going anywhere. And now we'll do pretty tight wraps, bringing it back up because that's going to start to cover everything down. All right. So see, I've got a little bit of a flare here. This is really where having the right deer hair comes in play. If that was the wrong deer hair, it'd flare way, 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 way too much. So anyway, food for thought. All right, so um, the material I'm using for the body is going to be this poly yarn and iron blue. And here it is here, very, very, very thick. So I've just taken it and I've gotten a shorter section here. Or not shorter, much less fibers right here. Okay. We got just a, just a handful of fibers here and I've tied a knot in it so I can reuse this. So all I'm going to do is pull this so this is the same length. A little trim. Now we'll pull that, just kind of catch it in with a loose wrap. Bring it down with a few to about right there. Now we've got tight wraps to the back. Okay. Nice knot. Yeah, that's when, whenever you're using material like that that's carded or even loose, if you'll just 
tie it in a knot when you pull it off when you before you cut it and tie it before you cut it that will make it to where you're much less likely to um waste any waste any okay so that's pretty good i've got a couple little pieces right there you're going to show through so i want to bring this down because i don't want any of my deer hair showing through my body there we go that's better and i probably should have split the wings before i tie that in but that's okay we'll do that now keep mine together with the test lead yep yep that uh those little clips are fine but uh, when I'm, I've tried that, like using hack pliers. So if I if I had this big chunk here um, held together with hack pliers, and when I used it, if I tied it in just like I did, my tips are not going to be lined up perfectly every single time. So when I tie it in a knot like this, and leave it like so, I can like in this case, I'm just going to pull a little bit out and tie another knot. But when I keep it tied in a knot, then once I get a good clean cut here. Every time I use it and every time I cut it out, it's always um, the set, the, the tips are always the same length. Now, I do use one of these pawns to hold it on my, my vice base there, but <clears throat> that's a little different. All right, so we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building this up. Hi from Colt Barry. Minus, minus 60. I think you got us all beat, Barry. I think you got us beat. So I'm just jamming some of these, making the thread dam, shoving these wraps right underneath. Stand that up. So you can see I kind of almost made like a little bit of a um, compare done wing. So splitting these is can be uh, aggravating because when you get it done and you've got one side that's a lot bigger than the other, you get kind of ticked. So I just took my, my thumbnail and I'll do it so you can kind of see what I'm what I'm doing here. Um, I'll take my thumbnail and I'll push up like this. So what that's going to do is it's going to kind of naturally split it. It's going to get that started. So I get that natural split. My, my thread's behind this wing. So I've got it naturally split. And I grab it with both hands. I'm just kind of with my fingers feel about what what's half and half. And then from the back, I'm going to put a couple wraps here. And then I go this side. And I'll put a couple wraps. So I've just put four wraps. I hope you all could have seen that. Or I hope you they, all saw they that. They couldn't see it because your right. hand was in the way. But I okay. saw the end of the, the other now side. Now let me yeah. do it so you can see it then. Okay, so I've got my thread behind my wing here, okay? Now I'm going to... No, you can't see it. Oh, okay. So I, I pull that one side down. And I'm gonna I'm doing this by watching the TV. Here's one and two wraps there. So now I've got it kind of split. There you go. And now I'm gonna bring my thread back around and I'm gonna grab the other half and do two wraps here. So it don't, don't have to be super tight, but now I've got them somewhat split. Okay. Now I'm gonna come up and Let's get me get my hand away real quick. So I'm gonna do like a parachute one, two, three. <laughs> Sorry, Gary, you're too funny. See, John is still working, working on, on his, his winter, winter beard. beard. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I am. Um, so I did three. Oh shoot, I got it's kind of hard. We can't hold on to it. One, two. They know what you're doing now. You're parachuting. You're, okay. So. so what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to wrap, put one wrap behind, and now my thread's going the wrong way. Okay? So now I bring that, and I go around the other the other um, wing. We'll do the same thing, like three wraps or so. One. Goodness gracious. I need to start whispering to it, then it'll, it'll work better. Try and get those three wraps in. And now I bring my thread back around. So my thread's going the correct way. So you can see I've got my 
<clears throat> my wings somewhat. Is it a shave mine? You have two ponies. So yeah, two little ponytails, and I can that, I haven't like tried to maneuver around that much, but really the thing thing to keep in mind is without me seeing that, it's not too bad. But if I wanted to I wanted to move this far wing, let me use the bucket. If I want to move this wing back a little bit, let me just bring it here, do another wrap there, and then pull it. Let's see if you can see it. See it when, like when I pull it, it moves it. And then I can bring it down. I don't have to move it around, but that's just use your thread to move to move the wings the wings around as you might need them. Okay, that's probably the the hardest part about this is getting your your calf body tail looking correct. So ask questions about that if you want. We'll tie one more after this. So I'm gonna take my um, my poly yarn that I tied in a minute ago. And I'm going to wrap it slightly overlapping, but I've got it pretty thin. Like I've got it, um, it's wide and thin right now. And I just have it wrapping straight up like this. Doesn't need to be all the way up to the, the um, wings, but close. I'll put a few wraps in here to capture all that. I don't think I would recognize you without a beard, Jeff. I want him to shave his beard off, and then we can go ride Harleys without beards. Right, Katie? That's right. <laughs> All right. So looking good so far. Now, I unfortunately did not prep this part, so you'll just talk amongst yourself for a minute. Let me... I've got a Whiting Farms bronze saddle that is a unique variant and it has a little bit of a little bit of everything in it, but I like that big thick uh, badger profile there. And um, it called the recipe calls for a dark brown hackle. And this has got a little bit of dark and a little bit of brown. Let's see how size wise that looks. That looks good, and I pulled it off too. Easy riders, that's right. Although I think if we did ride, I'd have to really work on my, my beard for a long time for me to pull off a Harley beard. Like, I don't think it would work, period. But, I mean, it makes a comic relief. All right, so we got our, our hack hole right here that I just pulled off the, the saddle. I'm just going, and we're just using one feather. This is just brown. This is not um, meant to be brown and, and uh, grizzly, anything like that. Pull this back, see how I've got that part done. And I'm bringing this, trying to keep this as even as possible all the way to the hook eye. I don't want that to be messy. So if you can see, my the bottom could be a little bit more. So let's put a little bit, one more layer back and forth. Because that's what the... Um, hackle is going to be riding on obviously is the bottom of this of the hook shank but that right there <clears throat> you want this to be smooth the fact that it goes here and jumps up doesn't matter you want this to be smooth because this is what is going to be um, keeping it level so it rides correct on the water uh I'm, this is a size 14 i'll typically fish these in 14s and 16s Typically, but I mean, size 12 would be fine too. I think if you get kind of difficult time in a 14 or an 18 or smaller, but you definitely could. So now let's wrap this, this guy. So to wrap this hackle, I'm going to come straight up, straight down. Okay, so I got my first wrap. Let's get my, there we go. So you can see, first wrap done. The next wrap, the top part of it is going to go right next to the uh the previous wrap now when i come down i'm gonna bring it down a little bit more see i'm, I'm bring it towards the hook eye a little more it's more angled and i come up and bring that next wrap right there and we'll jam that in so that's pretty tight behind behind there it's only a couple wraps so this is a size 14 but yes you could easily tie a size 12 no problem steve um 
So this is not going to make much sense, but I'm going to try to explain it. I've got, and Steve probably counted, I've got two or three wraps back here. But imagine the back here when I wrapped, I'm wrapping around something the size of my bodkin here, the blue part. The front, I'm wrapping around the size of my bodkin here, the tip. So one wrap around the tip is not going to have very many hackle barbules coming off of it, whereas one wrap around here is going to have a bunch. So if you can, if you kind of think about that, I'm getting quite a few, just with two or three wraps here, quite a few barbs coming off my rickus of the, the feather. So with that said, if I just put two wraps in front, it's not going to look right. It'll look almost non-existent because this, the diameter right here between the hook eye and where my bakken is now is much thinner than where my bakken is now. Does that make sense? So to finish the fly, I'm going to sit here and keep holding it. I've got my, my hackle. I'm, I've got it angled and bring it around. And I'm going to grab all this, pull it down, and I'm going to jam my next wrap hackle wrap right there. See how I jammed it behind? And I'm going to put probably four wraps, so twice the wraps. Jam it in there tight, super tight. So that's two wraps. Now I've got, let's get in there tight. Three. This is like the mad, tr mad scientist trick, trick. Four. And now we're ready to finish the fly. So we'll put one two, and three. Pull it tight. Try to get all those darn ones off there, which that looks fine. Oh, did you see that, what I was doing? Oops. Yep, yep, I just cool. switched over. All right, so now we're ready for a quick whip finish. That's what I was Keeps thinking. it from tipping forward. Hackle dam. A hackle dam. Yep, that's... We're talking about thread dams, and now we're doing a hackle dam. Y'all are just trying to get me to curse on live TV. Whip finish should be nice. All right, so now I'm going to pull this back, and we'll do about a four turn. Two, three, four. Get my finger off of the hook point. Let's see how we're looking. Pull this right. Now you should be able to manhandle this a little bit or woman handle it. But you can see how that, that it's, looks. It's a stout fly. Mm -hmm. And let's get like this. And if maybe a couple of those in the front could have been pulled off or cut off. But I can, my hook eye looks very clear. As far as, um, see what, what I mean? The back as half the hackle wraps as the front does. But if you look at it, it looks proportionate. Now, if I didn't jam them up in there and make them really, really tight. <laughs> yeah, Gary. Thank you, Michael. Um, if I didn't, if I, if I had them spaced out, then the front would be like way out here and I, my hook eye would be crowded and it would look not so bueno. Because I jammed them in there, it kind of looks um, proportionate. So I'm going to do one more thing, and then we'll go ahead and start with the last one, because I'll, I'll try to bang it out real quick. And that is finishing the, the thing. So I'll just get my Sally Hansons out. Do it in a, the brush, do it like that. Don't want to get a big old excess glob on it. That's going to go a little bit down into my hackle. Just a pinch, depending on how thin or thick your uh, Sally Hansons is, or your if you want to use resin, you can use a wire. Go through the hook eye. Just like that. And there you go. That, that, that's going to last for for a few fish anyway. Um, don't need to overthink it. That That's pretty cool. And the cool thing is, is here is the same, the exact same fly. Well, I did substitute one thing, but other than colors, here's the exact same fly. Now, this does have a calf tail tail as opposed to a deer tail, but it's just yellow poly yarn, uh, some red fluorobrite. You've got a different color hackle and different color, color wings. Same exact same pattern, just 
different colors. So that's pretty darn cool. That is pretty darn cool. That's like a dart. It makes you just want to throw it at the dartboard. Uh, yeah. But same thing. Just kind of playing around with, um, with, uh, yeah, the, the, that's what uh, they were doing. How do you avoid wrapping hackle over itself in the front of the, of the wing? I pulled, when I pulled it back, Joe asked me that here in a second when I'm doing it again, and uh, we'll figure it out. I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. But let's see. We'll pull out one more. And I, I like using a barb on these because sometimes these are buoyant enough that I can throw a little soft tackle or a light nip behind it. Um, and I like having that barb so I, I, I can tie the tippet here. Now you can tie a tippet on barbless, that's fine. Um, but especially these A-Rexes, the, the, um, the barb is really small, so it's not a big deal. Um, also, if I don't want a barb, it's a lot easier to crunch, to crush. I can just bend it down, no big deal. All right, so we'll tie the moose hair and March Brown dub body. Well, that's going to be kind of very similar to what we're going to do right now. We're going to do... Um, which do you recommend, the deer hair or calf tip for it? There's some deer. Um, uh, I can't really say. I've got both. <laughs> I just wanted something that would that would mimic more of a shock. But at the end of the day, these are all like attractor type flies, so not a big deal. All right, so I'm going to cut. I'm doing this same thing. We switch over to the side of the material. And the same thing. We'll pull this straight up. I can never figure out. This round. I need to get some more calf tail, as you can tell. And we'll brush this out just a pinch. I'm doing this so you can see it. Normally I do this right over my waste basket. Katie loves it when I make a mess, which is one, which is what we did the video on. Is Katie helping me clean up my mess, right, honey? Yeah, I, I just try, you know, to help in any way that I can. Um, Michael Misha is wonderful. She right now is on the couch over here and she, a few minutes ago she was snoring so loud but it's really cold here and so she likes to be out in the snow because every time it falls off a tree or flies up when she runs over it it's it's like something to catch um but she's worn herself out so when she comes in in the afternoon she's just like conked out on the couch and she's a big time snorer so she's snoozing away she is a bit of a snore um, oh, Jeff, M Misha misses you too. She's a sweetie. I don't know how the fly got its name. And um, it is basically a wolf with kind of different type of tail. But I guess not. It's basically a wolf with a, a polyarm body. But I think I saw my picture on that one meme going around about people taking a fly and changing one thing and renaming it. And that's what's cool about this book, man. This thing's got awesome flies in it. They work really good, and they were invented shortly after World War II. So um, I like tying other people's flies, so I can just go do this works great, and you don't have to worry about anything else. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this work. I don't really care for how that's going, but we'll make this go quick. Sounds so, good. So we're going <laughs> to... Bring this back. Remember, just kind of tie as much until you think you've got it. enough for that. Uh, the hackle to wrap. Cut this off at an angle. Must be that light. Looking down at this light. I'm, it's really not a big deal catching that. But it is today. Oh. So open spiral wraps down. Bring it back forward. Do our best not to cut our thread like we did with the last time. Start a little thread down here. Don't need to finish it. 
I tell you, when we look at the difference between calf tail and deer for the tail, um, the uh, and this this book is basically just a fancy magazine. It's it's not like. I mean, it's a good. It's it's fine. It's perfect. It's yep. it's not like a hardcover, like expensive, like super, you know, fancy. But no, like, it, it the pictures are good and the recipes are good, and it's and I think pretty basic. If, if, so. uh, if Jesse says they still have some copies, I would I would get a hold of somebody from an or buy them because I think this is self. It's out of print. Yeah. So I mean, if, if once they're gone, it's not like you can call up. Unless unless Congress. Roger has like. Thousands of them somewhere. Well, he, he probably does have a bunch of them somewhere, but okay. Let's do a quick little rough stack here of our tail that is made of deer. Measure it roughly the way we want it. Stick it there. Loose wraps all the way to the top of our ramp. Make sure that looks good. It does. Maybe a touch longer. Okay. Pull that tight. So Thunderhead Mountain. Oh, is that where the name came from? I, I thought someone said, do we know where the yeah, name Steve comes from? Yeah, Steve said that there's a mountain called Thunderhead Mountain that's visible from Bryson City. Okay. Well, this will be the, where they sell chocolate on Thunderhead Mountain for this chocolate Thunderhead. Mm. And... Uh, I can't remember his name, not Roger, but Dave Hall came up with Chocolate Thunderhead, too. It's kind of funny because when you start looking at these, like when you Google Adam's variant for like literally my favorite one in the book, you won't find anything on it. It's nothing, kind of makes you excited to have something in a book that's that you can't find anything online it's pretty cool and used to have the connect somewhere he ordered a few times but I, I mean fred's still around um not fred Roger. roger's still around so I mean, he's the one who wrote the book so i guess chad knows how to get a hold of him he could probably print him up a few copies i've never met him so if Chad can get me in touch with him. I'd love to chat with him. Do a little live. Uh... You just need to go over to his outfit and introduce yourself. That's right. Speaking of outfits, I asked earlier if you were still on, Jesse, and since you are on now, I know you're on. How's everything going at the Knoxville Smoky Mountain Angler? It's all where y'all opened. Are you working that much, or are you mainly in at the the other one, the Sevierville one, or the the Gallenberg, Gallenberg, one. Gallenberg one? Okay, so now we're gonna my my wings will be too dang long. So we're gonna use our fingernail, split this back. Okay, you can tell me when Jesse replies or says something about the Gallenberg location. We're gonna split this back, grab it into two pieces. Kind of look at them roughly. Yeah, it looks about right. And you can't see it, so I want to bring it to your side so you can. So I've got this one section of my hand thread behind the wing. Two wraps. One, two. I'm going to do one more wrap here to get my thread back on the correct side. And when I'm not, when I actually see it, I'm not trapping as much stuff. Now I've got this this wing held up. I'm gonna do one, two. Okay. So now I've got our basic wing split, and uh, we're ready to do our parachute. And I tried to do that with you all being able to see, and I did a horrible job at it. So there's three wraps around that one, and I'm gonna pull and get my thread going the wrong way. I'm going to do three wraps around this one. Three going the wrong way again. Or now it's going the correct way. Let me get this one straightened up a little more. 
All right. This will be a little fuzzy. Let's clean this up a bit. I think we're looking okay. Except for having long old wings. I'll wet my fingers and try to pull this forward just a bit. Jesse just gave you an update. And what's the update? He says he's only going down a day or two a week, but it's an hour and 10 minutes. I thought drive. It's a long drive for him. But he says that the shop is adding stuff weekly and the fly room is going to get a new pegboard soon and they put up some more inventory. And why he said he ordered some wiping hackle and it's on the way. Well, cool. We heard. Um, Al, who is ALC, I think, on here. He said he tied in the shop window a couple weeks ago on one of their oh, cool. opening times. Pretty fun. I saw what the shop looked like on Instagram. That looks nice. Yeah. All right. So this is just the brown. Now we're ready to wrap that. You got your thing in front of the camera. Oh, thank you, honey. I hate it when I get my thing in front of the camera, honey. I know, me too. All right. Three wraps so I can cut that off. Then we'll go to the same, the same piece of hackle. Well, Jesse says it's a cute place. Um, it's it's downtown Knoxville, right? Like, yep. It's yeah. Like it's in, uh, That's a fun part of town, and it's got a good it's vibe. Gay, it's on Gay Street, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so asked about the wrapping Oda hackle. Let's see. Can't wait to see it. Jay went down there today and bought a new loon stacker. Cool. That's a cute little place. Did you get the small, medium, or large Tennessee theater? Oh, well, wow. I went okay. To, I went yeah. to school there, and I still have no idea where it was, where, where you're located. But, you know, I guess that's what I get for probably not paying as much attention when I was at UT as I should have. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to catch that real good. Side by side wraps. All the way to the hook eye. And then I'm going to bring it back because I want this to be a nice, smooth transition. Like I said, all I'm trying to do is get this the bottom part. Move my, let's use my thing. See the line on the bottom? It's pretty straight. There's one little bump, one little indentation that if I wanted to right like there. There's a little little indentation right there that I could fill that in with thread, but I'm not too worried about that. But I want this to be flat. All this right here. If this has got a big bump or anything, that's where I'm that's where I'm worried. Um if it's you got the step on top, no big deal. Bottom, I want it flat. Oh, thank you, Freddie. Enjoying this? Please show the love and hit the like and subscribe button. And, and if you really like it, do a thumbs up. There you go, Freddie. Thank you. Give us a thumbs up. And if you really like it, leave us a comment after the video. <laughs> Thanks, Freddie. I appreciate the 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 um, reminder. All right. So for my, my two or three wraps behind the wing, I'm going to lick my fingers, pull this forward, Try to get the junk out of the way. Okay. And now the first wrap is straight up, straight down. So straight up, straight down. Sorry, I guess straight, straight down, straight back up. Okay. So I've got my my first wrap done. Okay. Now I'm going to have my next wrap on the top. It's going to be right beside my previous wrap. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to bring it forward. So this is going to be almost underneath the wings. Okay. And then we'll bring this to behind the wings again. So I've got two or three wraps done. Okay. Now this is what someone was asking about. Always smash the like button. That's right. Smash it. Smash it. We're down there in April. I have to take it. Just a bit of but hard to beat. Yeah, the Gatlinburg one's good for sure. Well, Mark, let us know when you're down here. We'd love to hang out with you. All right, Joe. So, uh, you, you, do you understand how I got to this part of it? I hope so. I'm not going to need to reply. So, 
Let my fingers again. I'm going to pull this back. See this little crease right where my fingernail is? That little, like, it's almost like the indentation where my thread dam was. I'm going to shove that hackle stem right in there. I'm not worried about the barbs. I'm going to shove right in there, and then we'll bring it back. Like, it's almost going back towards the hook point. Okay? I bring it around, and I'm using my fingers again. Pull it back, and I'm shoving that right there again. Okay? Third time. Got it so far? Use my fingers. Pulling it back. And see that? I, I was going to bring it up like that, but I was like, nope. Bring it back right there. Okay. Now I'm ready to catch this off. Because that was four wraps. I could probably done a fifth one. But this one's already got me upset because my I made my wings way too long. But at least I didn't break my thread. That been bursting. Cut it that gum twice. Pretty sure that one will be fine. God darn it. Once you hit it with one hack of fiber, get you going. There we go. Okay, bring my thread back to the back. And another thing, you know, wrapped it, yes, wrapped right in front of each other. I don't know what Joe and Freddie are saying yes to, but uh, Bill, they're they're wrapped right in front of each other. You can leave a little bit of gap if you want to, but not on top of each other. Yep, they're they're not being on top. They're not on top of each other, but I guess they're close. All right, so now I'm gonna one, two, three, four. Hey, one to grow on, just for the fun of it. Pull it tight. And we've got, see the, the, see, yes, if they're wrapped on top of each other, you can see there each wrap. So there's four wraps right there versus the two behind the wings, two, three behind the wings. See, if you're wrapping around a pin, you don't get as many hackle fibers. You're wrapping around a pencil, you get a lot more hackle fibers. It makes sense, trust me. And if you're a newbie like me, you make your wings too long. And the fish will be like, wait a minute, that one doesn't work. I'll never bite it. I'd say it'll be just fine though. So we'll throw some glue on here again. I'll put it up in the angle and we'll call this one done. So uh, thank you, Gary. We're banging them out tonight. So as um, Katie put the email address, we would love to see your all's fly so we can share them next week. We will start doing giveaways again. Um, but I got to get back in the swing of things and figure all this out. Um, got that, that on there. Um, but email us or tag us in the, the Instagram photograph. We'd love to, um, we just love seeing them. That's our payment right now is seeing your all's work. Um, and can, if it's, um, can you show the um, yellow Sally one real quick? Sure. Is that one just your your fave your fave? Well, Jesse wants to see it. Uh, I guess we could rename this one. This is not the Thunderhead anymore. This is the John and Jesse special. Yes. That's uh, now th this is uh it's floor bright for the red. So if you look at the see all that red, you can't see it in this darn thing. But trust me, the red like is exploding well, under cover up the white thing under and do it. Nope. <laughs> How about maybe I go like this. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Nope, it's not so. But that red butt is like exploding. So you got to trust me. That one is fluorescent. Um, and, uh, and yellow, yellow, and brown. I can't remember what color calf tail that is. Um, Looks like rust. Park. Oh, free float trees. Hey, and Jesse, I took John Christopher to uh, fish the kids section in Gatlinburg a few weeks ago. I'll have to tell you about it. It was a blast. Herbert Park. Herbert Park. Yep. That is the proper length of wings, not the one I just tied. But <clears throat> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you all have any requests, anything you like to see, we love it if you subscribe. We love it if you liked it. Thank you so much, Freddie, for the... the um, the reminder, Katie, we switch this over to something besides the, the hook. Joe, thank you so much. Um, 
unfortunately won't see you guys in denver everyone going to denver have fun our next show we'll be over hanging out at the atlanta show at least on saturday so hopefully we'll see some of you all there um look forward to hearing from you all your questions and comments are awesome send us your pictures and i'll let katie take it out see you guys next wednesday night bye everybody have a great weekend have fun tying up some flies hopefully you can tie up some thunderheads. Send us a pic and we'll share it next week. Good to see everybody again. See you later. I forgot how to end the stream. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, I would um, change, see how you can do your focus.